Sometimes you just need a terabit or two of fiber optic connectivity. I mean, you know, you gotta shove tab A in slot B, and let me tell you, IC Dock is here to make that happen. PCIe slot into a single M.2? No, PCIe slot into two M.2. What about 24 two and a half inch bays or NVMe right in the front of your machine? These cases are fabulously ancient. The adapters actually cost more than the case. These are, these are Antec like 300s or something, something incredibly ancient. But they contain test systems that are almost made out of e-waste with brand new motherboards and Milan processors. So you, you put the fastest best processor in here and the fastest best motherboard and then you've got something really special. Not one but two of those. Well, let's take a closer look. The first thing that I want to show you is this NVMe SSD mobile rack for PCIe expansion slots. You can't call M.2 hot spot. No matter what you do, no matter what you do with the stuff that I'm going to show you, M.2 is not really meant to be hot swap. If you get this, it's a PCIe card that has two M.2 slots on it that are accessible from the rear. So if you do something like this and you use this for your operating system, you can use this as a mirror. You got to do that in software. And then the M.2 will be accessible to the outside, the rest of the machine. But IC Doc has got you covered because it comes with the 0.7 millimeter heat pads and it comes with the one millimeter heat pads. So if you're using M.2 that are double-sided or single-sided, you've got the correct thickness thermal pad to make thermal connection because this whole enclosure is a heat sink. So this is a full height PCIe card, but look at this. Remember the five and a quarter inch bay that I looked at a while ago? Well, this is the same thing except in an M.2 form factor. Now, if you're gonna use this, your motherboard needs to support bifurcation because you're gonna to have to put your uh, PCIe slot in an X4, X4 mode. If it goes into an X16 slot, it'll be X4, 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 X4. If it goes into an X8 slot, it just needs to be X4, X4. You've even got LED headers. It's a hallmark of quality. Now remember, M.2 is not meant to be hot swap, so it's not going to give you the magical hot swap capability, but it will at least let you change M.2 easily if one of them dies or they need to remain accessible for some reason. Now the reason that I like these older cases is because they fit perfectly in a 19 inch rack. If you have a 19 inch rack and you have a rack shelf installed, the width of this case is perfect for a rack. These cases also have three five and a quarter inch bays at the front. In this one, I've installed the IC Dock Tough Armor adapter that lets us run four M.2. These are connected directly to a header on my motherboard, and this is a Samsung eight terabyte Enterprise NVMe. And yes, PCIe Gen 4 works completely fine. These are Gen 4 SSDs. Now notice that these are the, the lower height SSDs, but our enclosure supports the full height, like if you're running a, you know, an Intel P4500, an SSD like that, works fine, and these are NVMe. If you have a three and a half inch bay, you can also adapt one of those. This is also a two NVMe enclosure, and this is PCIe 4 rated. It's a different connector on this side, but you can go from one of the X8 connectors on your motherboard to the dual X4, the SFF small form factor, and these, Samsung SSDs will work fine with this. So if this case had three and a half inch bays, you could use one of these and it would be fine. It's not meant to be toolless, but I'm toolless. Now these are true server motherboards that we're using in here. We're, we're using the uh, Tyan S8030 that I've reviewed previously, been doing some long-term PCIe 4 testing. We're also using a Supermicro H12 SS-NT, SSL-NT. And these are server motherboards. They're designed for server levels of airflow. And most of the time, a desktop case is not going to have server levels of airflow. What do you do about that? Ah, Arctic P12 Max fans. Takes it a second for the IPMI to boot up. 
because the system won't boot until after the IPMI actually boots. So when you first plug it into power, the computer within a computer, the remote management card has to boot up. And then the system boots up. Yeah, one of them's RGB, one of them's not, because hey, the Arctic RGB fans were on sale. Now because of the aforementioned airflow situation, and because we've got the 220 millimeter fans in the front, I'm using a sheet of paper which directs airflow over the cards and motherboard. See, there's a heat sink at the back edge of the motherboard. That's where the network card is. And that little heat sink will get super, super hot unless there's a lot of airflow. Again, this is designed for server levels of airflow. Now, I've got my push-pull configuration on the Arctic Tower Cooler in this config. And of course, it fits fine because this case is taller than 4U. It's not really exactly designed for a rack. It just fits in a rack or it can be used with a rack shelf. It's not too wide or too tall. You've also got a three and a half inch base at the front with this ancient case. I know some of you are still rocking these at home because these have shown up in the channel before. But uh, we were doing uh, some of the, the Devember Minecraft stuff, the Minecraft testing and game server testing on this because we're using Epic uh, 75F3 processors, which are the fastest single core clock speed server CPUs you can get. Well, at least until Genoa. So, yeah, fun times. If you're building a test lab or a test platform, I mean, obviously, I don't really recommend these for, like, production use. But the IC Doc stuff for mixing and matching and doing workload characterization, it is super useful to be able to put stuff together like this. In fact, I actually ended up buying about 20 of these IC Doc MB705M2PB adapters. These are the first adapters that I've encountered that are actually PCIe 4 compatible that will connect an M.2 to a U.2 connector because I've got some servers that I'm testing that have 20 or 24 uh, U.2 NVMe slots on the front but I didn't have that many enterprise SSDs. I actually borrowed a lot from Keoxia, thanks Keoxia, to do my testing but I've since returned those and it's like well I need to get something that's affordable but it's also blazing fast and that's why I bought 32 Solidine P44 Pros, because they were even faster than the Samsung 980s. Of course, over time, I've also probably bought about 25 or 30 Samsung 980s for testing and stuff that we're doing here. <laughs> I gotta do more. I need, <laughs> I need people to remote in and run tests remotely, because, oh, there's so many tests. But these were really super insanely handy. Like the other docks, these come with a thermal pad, and they come with a nice metal heat sink. So they're really not that expensive in terms of, you know, you, you kind of get what you pay for. And I'm really happy with the physical form factor of these. I haven't found anybody crazy enough to send me 24 SATA SSDs, which is what I could use with this system below. I would love to build a, 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 a portable Acropolis of all human knowledge on like 4 or 8 terabyte SATA SSDs in a tiny little storage cube with a handle. It's just carried around. It's like, what's on that? Oh, Wikipedia and, you know, this, that, and the other. I've got a vision to build an appliance that just mirrors Wikipedia and Linux distributions and, uh, you know, some user forums and maybe some select things from the Internet Archive. And then, you know, you could just grab that and restart civilization. Maybe it's got some books. It can be its own Wi-Fi access point. Not as, like, a serious thing, but it's kind of an art piece. It's like, okay... Here's the thing that we can use to restart civilization. What is it? And it's not going to be large language models or AI or anything like that. It's just going to be what, what can we do with, uh, you know, basically Stone Age technology to, to reboot civilization as quickly as possible. I don't know. I guess that doesn't work if you, uh, you know, you don't have some device to connect to the Wi-Fi or the solar panels wear out or whatever. You know, it, we, we got a limited time, like 100 years to reboot civilization, after which such a device would be completely useless. I get it. Again, it's kind of an art piece, more than a statement, but that that piece of IC Doc hardware is going to be perfect for that. Or just maybe sometimes you need a small portable storage server you carry around for backups or whatever. I don't know. It's a lot of fun. And the last thing that I'll show you is the uh, U.2 docking enclosure for external three and a half inch bay. This one is a different one than the other one. This one is truly toolless. I actually ended up buying a couple of these to use around the office. This is a single bay, but check this out. It's designed to just insert a naked drive. No sleds at all. You get your SATA power and your PCIe connection at the rear. It's got a physical switch for turning it on and off so that it's, you know, it can kind of sort of be hot plug. Your host system has to be hot plug, which is very often not the case. 
and it can be hard on your processor because the lanes are wired directly into the processor. So I recommend shutting the machine down and, you know, not actually hot plugging. Let's get the cool eject button. And there you go. And so this fits in a three and a half inch bay and gives you, like, this is the perfect thing for a workstation. It really is just a whole other awesomeness. So yeah, I don't know. I just wanted to show you the cool stuff from IC Doc. Some of it they sent, a lot of it I bought because we actually use it. It's really, really good stuff. Should definitely check it out. I love the convenience of being able to get to my M.2. And yes, you can rock 110 mil M.2. If you're running some really high performance M.2, like the Samsung M.2, that have the power loss capacitors, those will get insanely hot. They actually run better in these because this whole thing acts like a heatsink than they do in a lot of server chassis natively. A lot of the time, uh, Dell chassis, for example, don't really monitor uh, the temperatures of, of non-Dell peripherals. So you'll, if you put a, you know, a bunch of Samsung SSDs, M.2 SSDs, and just your, your standard issue like tower Dell server, doesn't even bother ramping the fans and those, those little things can sit there and cook themselves. Meanwhile, this in a PCIe slot tends to work a lot better. I'm Little, this is Level 1. This has been a quick look at the, the state of the IC dock in 2023. I'm signing out. You can find me in the Level 1 forums. Woo!